coating styrofoam or EPS foam with TC821 polyurethane resin. Now this video is the product of some tests I was doing in my shop, coating styrofoam with resin. And this is something I know many of you out there do. And this is the project that I mentioned in the video that I posted last week uh, about the translucent vampire bust that I did. I originally brought this resin in for coating foam because some of the people at BJB had told me they had people coating styrofoam with the 821. But in the process of uh, running some tests with that, I found that it actually worked really good as a translucent resin for translucent bus. But uh, if you didn't see that video already, definitely check that out. I will link that on the end screen. But uh, TC821 is a resin that uh, comes from BJB, and it's one that they have recommended and a lot of customers have used for projects requiring a hard coating over carved styrofoam. So for the sake of this video, I just did some real simple pieces out of foam. I just got out one of my old uh, hot wire foam knives and cut up some pieces and just took that through the usual paces of uh, cutting that with a hot knife and sanding it. And you'll see later on in the video, I also use a wig head form just so I could see how this would work on a vertical surface. So again, this is all pretty rudimentary. Um, maybe in a future video, if there's interest in it, I could actually do something a little bit more sophisticated and maybe get one of my uh, foam carving friends in on the act because I am a caveman thought out by your scientist. I am not a professional foam carver of any variety. But before we get started, let's go over the physical properties of the TC821 polyurethane resin. So first off, this is a very hard impact resistant resin. This cures to an 84D. And a lot of polyurethane resins that are used for this application are typically a lot softer than that. So this sands really well. And it's also a two minute working time and 30 to 60 minute demold. And that may sound really fast, but as you'll see in the video here, I actually got a lot of work done in well within that working time. And then of course, a one to one mix ratio by volume. 1200 centipoise mix viscosity and that's going to sound like a lot until you actually see this being poured because I did some casting with this as well to pour up some little bolts that I decorate the card foam with and it worked very well as a traditional casting resin in spite of that seemingly high mixed viscosity. And if you saw the Vampire Bus video, you already know this cures translucent, so it's easy to pigment. And of course, you can thicken this to a paste consistency with fiber thick thickener. Now for this first batch, I'm just gonna mix up a small batch of the 821. And of course that part B, you need to shake that before you dispense it. Make sure all the magic particles are evenly dispersed. And of course, because this has that very fast working time, I'm going to add some ultra black pigment just to the part B first. And that way I can get that well mixed into that B before I add the part A. And even though this does have a really fast working time, uh, for smaller to medium sized projects, that working time was actually ideal. So once that's mixed in, once I've got the pigment mixed into the part B, I'm ready to add the part A. And of course, this is a one to one mix ratio by volume. Now there is a weight ratio I'll show later in the video, but uh, for this application, most of the things that many of you are gonna do with this resin, the one to one volume ratio is fine for that. And now what I'm gonna do is pour up into a gang mold. And again, this is one of those things I made in a previous video, the gang mold of these little bolts. And this is another uh, tutorial I will link on the end screen. And the reason I'm pouring these up is typically when I do carved foam pieces that are gonna look like old metal, I always like to pour up some of these little bolt heads and screws and things like that to decorate those foam parts. It just makes them look that much more realistic. And now I'm ready to mix up my first batch of resin for actual foam coating. Now I mix up another four ounce batch here, but that was actually way more than I actually needed. So I could have backed off and actually done about half the size of this batch. And again, I'm gonna be adding the ultra black pigment to the part B. And these are some of the new phthalate free pigments. And again, this is a one to one mix ratio by volume, or if you're working in really small amounts, sometimes it's helpful to move over to the weight ratio to be that much more accurate. And the weight ratio of course is 100A to 90 parts B. 
Now it's important to remember the working time whenever you're working with a fast setting material like this. Again, this is a two minute working time at room temperature and a 30 to 60 minute demold. Now obviously we're not casting apart with this, but typically what I found is in about 20 minutes, you typically have a layer that you could easily put another coat on top of. So the recoat time is typically about 15 to 20 minutes. And then when you hit that tack free level where you could actually start sanding on it, typically that's gonna hit at about 60 minutes or so. Sometimes a little bit longer for really thin cross sections. And this is where that mix viscosity, that 1200 centipoise mix viscosity, actually works out well for this particular formula because that allows it to uh, self-level really nice and kind of get us a uh, self-leveling glossy surface and has just enough body to it to grab onto those vertical surfaces. And one of the things I learned from this, and again, hope to do a longer video, a more in-depth video on this once I get the hang of this product. One of the things I found out is that I really over applied resin on this. This is hard enough and strong enough that really I didn't need near as much as I was trying to apply to this surface. So in the future, I wouldn't apply near as much material to the surface as I was doing here. So again, a four ounce batch was way more than I actually needed to do this. Now I'm going to allow that to gel and cure for about 15 minutes and come back and recoat with a second layer. And I think two layers for this is probably going to be ample. There might be larger pieces you could do with multiple coats. The main reason I came back with a second layer is because that corner looked a little thin. So I wanted to make sure everything had an even layer on it. But again, I found out I did not need much. It takes a very small amount of this resin to get a nice coat, a nice tough hard coat on your styrofoam. Now, as for those little drips that you see coming off there, one of the things I found with the drips is it's best to trim those after it sets up about 20 to 30 minutes or so. They'll still be a little bit on the soft side, so they're easy to trim with scissors. But uh, if you let those sit too long, they get really hard and really strong and more difficult to trim those off. And you might actually need a Dremel tool. So just be aware of that. It does have a really nice sandable consistency after about an hour. So um, if you need to sand the surface, that's very easy to do. And again, in the future, I want to do a more complicated piece where I do actually take this through the steps of applying the resin and letting that cure and then sanding it and primering it and painting it. But again, for the sake of this video, I wanted to do this as quick and dirty as possible and see under the worst case scenario how this material would perform. So now this is my wig head. And uh, again, I found out that I didn't need near as much resin as I thought I did. So yes, I did have some dripping off and you'll see the little puddles here in a minute. But uh, overall, this coated the piece and got me a really nice high gloss finish. And that was another one of the original reasons I reached out to BJB for this resin was I wanted something that I could apply to a foam to give it that nice high gloss finish and uh, this is what came up in conversation. So here we are. Now, again, one of the things I found out, as you see there, I'm getting a lot of drips. So if I had not over applied it, I wouldn't have gotten a lot of those drips and runs. And obviously that can be sanded out of that final coat, but uh, best to avoid that uh, just by not over applying the resin. So lesson learned. And next time around, I won't be applying near as much resin. So here you can see, really, I could have left this alone at that point because it had a really nice, tough coating. But uh, again, because I was a little paranoid about how thin that may or may not have been, I went ahead and came back with a second layer and put that on. And this is where I definitely over applied it. But uh, either way, this is how you learn a material. You do tests like this, and this is how you get comfortable and confident with a particular resin for an application like this. So again, that two minute working time, same kind of thing here. And that recoat time is typically about 15 minutes or so. So again, this is the second layer. I came back, brushed on. The thing you mainly have to watch out for this with this is you got to stop messing with the resin when it starts getting kind of grabby and just leave it alone and walk away. Even the little drips, just let them go. And you'll see, yes, I did have some little drips, but it's not near as much as I expected. So uh, more clung to the piece than I had accounted for. Now, this is about 30 minutes later, and I went ahead and came back and used a razor knife to cut away some of those drips. 
Again, you could use a scissors also. Uh, you just want those to set up enough that if, especially if you're using scissors, that you don't gum up your scissors trying to cut those off. So uh, again, I just let those set up just enough that they didn't mess up my cutting tool by removing it. Now, same thing with the other piece. I actually let this sit a little bit longer. So those drips are a little bit more solid, but uh, overall still easy to remove with a razor knife or rasp. Here I had cut away some of those already with the uh, razor knife, and now I'm coming back with a wood rasp to clean up that edge. And again, nice thing about this resin is it's not brittle. There are some resins I've worked with that doing this uh, would have just caused that resin to shatter, and this one did not. Now we're ready to demold our little bolts and attach them to our part. This is another one of those little testing things I like to do with a resin like this is see how well it sticks to itself. And this is all done when the resin was very fresh. So now what I've done is I've mixed up another batch of pigmented TC821 and I've added the fiber thick thickener. And the fiber thick is an inert thickening agent. You can check that out on some of my other videos. I'll link a video on the end screen explaining that a little bit more in detail. And I just made a thick paste out of that. And there I over applied it a little bit. So I'm sharing that little glob of adhesive between a few bolts. And basically what I've done is by thickening up the TC821 with that fiber thick, I've created kind of an adhesive paste out of the resin that works well for filling gaps and sticking other parts together. I didn't have any of the armor bond adhesive handy, so this is what I went with. So uh, in a more involved tutorial, I might actually uh, rough up those areas and sand them a little bit before I stick down some bolts like that. But uh, this actually got a really good bond and everything stayed really well put once I stuck it all together. And the impact resistance was really good. And this was the part that actually really surprised me because again, in my haste and my uh, desire to just run this through all its paces, I didn't even primer this part and just applied the cheapest chrome or silver spray paint that I could find over the top. Again, I figured that black base coat would be a good uh, metallic undercolor and just hit that with the silver spray paint over the top. And I got a surprisingly good bond between this super duper cheap uh, spray paint and that resin surface. And as many of you know, um, that is definitely the exception to the rule. Most of the times when you uh, paint a polyurethane resin like this, you don't get that good of a bond. So uh, excellent adhesion of just regular over-the-counter paint. And overall, I think these were pretty good results, which is why I am sharing them with you now, dear viewers. So I hope you all enjoyed this little look into my little laboratory and some of the little things I have going on around here. I hope uh, those of you that do foam carving will find this uh, edifying and embiggening to uh, the projects you might be taking on. And as usual, be sure to check out the video description. I will link all of the products I used in the video description below. And check out the end screen. On the end screen, I'll link to the vampire bust that I mentioned earlier, as well as the gang mold tutorial that I mentioned, and also the video about thickening resin with a fiber thick thickener. So check all those out on the end screen. And of course, as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for supporting the channel.